Yes, legends, welcome back to the channel as always, guys. And look who we have on the screen right now. We have two of my best buddies of all time in crypto. I've known you guys for actually, must be years and years now, I think, even before the token. Yeah, was three years, uh, something like that, yeah, for sure. <laughs> the time has flown, yeah. man, but like, uh, it's great to see you legends again because obviously we're going to talk about the biggest topic right now in crypto, which is crypto gaming. David's in the middle, Nicholas on the side. It's great to see you guys. We're just going to get straight cut to the mustard with this, okay? Because I'm going to show the community something right now. Look at this. <laughs> this is why <laughs> everyone's talking about Ultra right now. And this is a massive, massive pump in the price of the UOS token. Obviously, um, if anyone, congratulations if you've been in this token from the beginning. Like I've been talking about this for years and years and years. Even before it was an ELC20 out, I was talking to Nicholas and Dave about this, gonna, like the potential of this. And... This is bringing a lot of hype and just want to say congratulations to the team and everything. And obviously, like you just said a second ago, Nick, like this is only just the beginning. And that's so, so right in terms of where this can go because of um, the small, it's a tiny market cap still in terms in, in comparison to other competitors out there. But we'll get into the token in a second. Just want to quickly start with uh, just saying hi to you guys. And how's it been since we last spoke, man, in like the whole general company for you? It must be kicking off in terms of people getting excited about it yeah um yeah things are actually quite crazy um you know as you know with the news that went around like uh, there was a lot of game developers reaching out to us um the team itself uh, is steadily still growing we're still hiring by the way please go see our website we have a lot of a lot of open positions um and um and and then the progress of the product itself has been fantastic um we're really seeing our team coming along and you know um getting on the automated you know workflow that we have put in place a lot of stuff um is being ironed out um for you know the the, the launch and so overall yeah it's it's really crazy i'm super happy where we are um i'm also super happy of you know tons of decisions that we took uh back in the time that you know today confirm um are being confirmed here and there where you see you know these uh these um you know interest uh, from game developers now popping from everywhere um and yeah. so and now we're there with this fantastic solution for them and you know everybody's excited and so yeah it's super exciting man and like like i said the, this is just basically like the reality of people getting excited like people buy the token because they're excited about the projects and you can see the excitement in generally gaming I like we've been we've been talking about this for a long time like you know we knew this was going to come anyway because we saw like any of the power of nfts in the gaming side and let's just start with just a uh go back one step and let's just talk about like the utility of the urs token and obviously at the moment you can't use this for much because uh it's not publicly released yet the platform but like what will the main use cases of this token be and like what and how will this probably drive the i i won't, won't put words in your mouth but i think that's what it's going to drive is the utility of the token because there's so much utility it's going to end up driving a lot of people to hold hold it and stake it which then in turn will reduce the supply and there'll be increasing demand when more play, people come in so maybe if you guys just like tell us like the core of the token for the future there, that'd be great there are maybe two um yeah yeah just oh uh, yeah okay and, and nicholas go, go ahead sorry Yep. So basically, there are a few few ways uh, the token is used. Um, obviously, it's it's the main currency on the platform. Knowing that when you purchase, you know, uh, a game or you purchase virtual items or whatever you want to purchase on the platform, uh, you can do it using the US tokens. Now, it's also important to understand that it's made for mass market, so we don't want to shove blockchain in the face of anybody from the get go. Uh, for the gamers, they just want to use, I don't know, their credit card or whatnot, they just do it. Automatically, we do the conversion on the back end. So we, we are connected, you know, to crypto exchanges. So we are we are able to handle this whole whole process. Uh, and the idea is you receive, you know, tokens over time, right? So whether you resell your game, you receive US, uh, which is obviously somebody else paying in US or paying in fiat and transform into US. Uh, so every time somebody pay with fiat and somebody received us on the other side there is a purchase happening on the exchange um and yeah the idea is that you start to getting that and like that's cool I, I get some money i can use it to buy something else uh then you can browse buy tokens like nfts uh and then you could even stake uh, in the future your us 
which grants you, you know, some NFTs, some uh, some discount on games, so neat stuff, you know, that you would want yeah. as a gamer. Um, mm. And so, yeah, the idea obviously is that this becomes the primary uh, currency on the platform, and this can be used as well on different uh, applications, which are also part of the platform. Mm. Uh, and then we also have a whole aspect which is tied to the um, to the the technical technical side. Yeah, yeah. Because I saw. Um... Yeah, I, think, I think there are really the two main um, utility for uh, UOS. The first one is getting priority over the network. So we have a mechanism we call Ultra Power, which allow you to get priority in case the network reached its max capacity. So we benchmarked it at 12,000 transactions. Um, and this is on a single thread. We will multi-thread it, and then we can probably be the fastest blockchain in the world once we, we do that. But um, if we reach 12,000 TPS, then there is a queue mechanism, and we're ranking people with the most ultra power will be executed first. So this is an opportunity for you know companies that have mission critical um, you know use cases. Um, you know, you can imagine a big corporation, they cannot um, take the risk of having their services down when transaction fees are too high or something like that. So what they do is they buy ultra coins, they stake them, and then they receive ultra power. And this ultra power, they can use it to sponsor transaction of a particular smart contract. So that means that anybody that uses that smart contract gets instantly executed even if the network is on its knees because 12,000 transactions occur. So this is really the utility um, number one of in on the protocol level. And then the second big utility is what Nicholas mentioned, um, but it's still not very, I think not people, people don't really realize this, but mm -hmm. inside our NFT, you have the marketplace. It's part of the NFT. Uh, so um, every time you're going to sell your 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 NFT, it's you you need to actually um, somebody needs to actually pay with UOS. There's no way around basically. Mm -hmm. So any NFT sold or traded on the marketplace, um, which is embedded in the NFT, is done in UOS, and that that would be the the second biggest. Um, I mean, that would be, uh, yeah, the number two biggest yeah. uh, use case. And that, that what you just said there is basically what the whole value proposition of engine coin is. It's basically a way of minting NFTs, which can go in games to stand. And that's like one part of everything else Ultra is well, doing. Well, it's, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different because once you mint um, your NFT with engine, you, you typically you will, you can go and, you know, sell it in any type of currency. While with the Ultra, NFT, you 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 still use UOS for the purchase right. and the resale and and so on. So we're it's kind of like really merging the coin mechanics with the NFT standard mm -hmm. itself. So the exact it's, transaction it's very different. Yeah, because yeah, the exact transaction no euros in US, but you can very well use another currency uh, to purchase initially. So you use that, and then there is a processing uh, behind the scene that use a rectal, verify the the conversion rate. And then transform that into US and purchase the US. So it doesn't mean it's limiting people, but it's just forcing the usage of the token for the transaction itself without affecting the user experience. It's yeah. just driving that back, that value back to the US token in every yeah. single respect. And then yeah. obviously this this ties in nicely as well with the whole Steam have just said that they're gonna ban NFT crypto <laughs> games from their platform, right? Yeah. And uh we just said off camera that they're probably gonna do a massive U-turn on this. Like, do you think this puts like um Companies like Ultra just like going to get you guys even further ahead of where you think you could be. Do you think this is a good thing? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a good thing for us. Like, uh, we've seen a lot of traction, a lot of game developers coming back to us, um, and you know, a lot of actors in the in the crypto space, generally speaking, um, are investing in games right now and not having so the thing is like uh, epic games said okay guys you know we're going to accept blockchain games um but that doesn't mean that your game will be on their store if they're just saying what they're really saying is it's not a blocker for us <laughs> but actually you know the epic store is is a store where you you can't go just on it because you want to 
they select the people they want to work with. So that means that um, there's a massive uncertainty for all these game developers because maybe having an option to publish, it's not enough when you're investing millions of dollars making these games, right? Mm. So we're that solution. We're, we're this, this company where they know, yes, okay, um, uh, these are the guidelines to go on ultra. Okay, you can't do illegal stuff. You can't do that enough. Okay, if we comply with this, then I know I can be published on ultra. And so this is kind of like, um, you know, yeah, saving. Them. Yeah, yeah. For them, it's it's giving them a lot of um, security and guarantee that uh, it's going to be fine. And I can see Ultra being like a, a hub for like indie games. Even when I went on it today, I was like looking at all these like new games I've never seen before, which would never have been, or would ever have seen them on Steam, right? But like, uh, I feel like because you can give rewards back to smaller game companies, it really creates that nice synergy where you can get lots of small games companies, lots more like to just choose from, just generally on the platform. Um, yeah. And I think that's, that's important because like you just see these big games companies taking over these days. But uh, next thing I wanted to mention is that exactly. And so... You just did this big partnership. I won't. You you guys can explain which partners you've got in terms of the indie game developing company. But what's the the big new games you've got on the platform now? I think in terms of games, uh, we'd have to wait a bit to see them next week. I think during the the wave two. Uh, but aside of this, I think we already started to announce a few. Uh, so Plugin Digital, as you know, is one of the the, the new publishers uh, that we onboarded, and they have. I think like more than 700 games or 800 games. So yeah, decent amounts, wow. I may say. Uh, they're like really one of the, the big boys in the space in the games industry. Uh, that, but they've tons of amazing games. Uh, and yeah, honestly, they, they've been always, you can see them in the news a lot recently because they're really becoming one of the top, top publishers in the world. Does, does uh, that mean that all the games they have are going to be available to purchase on Ultra? Not especially all the games. Basically, there is a selection as well of games. You create the content. Uh, it's not like 100% of all games will be on the track of some games or maybe old. Some games are maybe not super amazing. Some are really like killers. So there's a level of curation as well. And Plugin Digital is already doing an, an amazing job at selecting the game. So that helps a lot. Uh, nice. I think, so maybe, I think it's maybe interesting to explain for people who are not in the game industry. So um, basically, um, Plugin Digital is a publisher. So what they do is they um, meet with game developers and what they do is, okay, guys, you, get, you make a great game or you, you've made great games. We want to help you get to the next level. And basically, they're putting some marketing efforts. They're pu putting, you know, money. They're putting all kinds of um, social efforts so that this game can be successful. And so, plugin, di <coughs> sorry, plugin digital is one of these publisher. And so, for us, it's um, it's a strategic um, decision to actually work with publishers so that we don't need to find these, you know, um, many many developers and and you know, have these conversations, they have them. So when we work with Spot Plugin Digital, we're actually working with, you know, I don't know how many developers they have under their, their belt, but many. Um, and yeah. many have been, you know, uh, winning tons of very um, uh, good awards. Um, and and some of these games have been just massive uh, successes, like uh, many millions of copies have been sold. And so for us, that, you know, it's a great, it's a great company to work with. Mm. And that's what's yeah. going to drive that more more users to the platform in turn bringing the price up exactly the, the euro. Yeah. Okay, yeah. What were you saying, Nick, as well? Yeah, the thing is that's when you work with publishers uh, or distributors, and when you work with directly the developers, which we do. Uh, so we have you know indie developers that we are working with, or larger developers as well. Uh, and the idea is that when you work directly with them, you can also have um, this discussion on the game design itself. And it can help them as well to craft a great experience, which would be suitable for NFTs and for play to earn models. Uh, so that's also one of the way we work on uh, with partners. And when you work directly with those publishers and developers, you can also work on exclusive content. Uh, and that's also one of the way you can drive a lot of traffic. Like when you buy a Nintendo, you want to buy Mario or Zelda, you buy a PlayStation, you want, you know, you know how yeah, it works. Yeah, Final Fantasy going to be there if you want it. 
Uh, so that's what sort of why it's right. Logo Legends, you got it right there. I'm branded by them. They're sponsoring me for with Ultra. Let's go, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's that's really cool because that's that's the way you know we can uh, we can drive this um, this traffic in addition to the, all the partners like AMD and so on that we discussed already a few times. Uh, so, so yeah, it's just it's just a way Ultra is crafted. Uh, it's also to drive a lot of traffic to it and to retain the users because it's very engaging at its core in the way uh, we design the whole ecosystem. Uh, so people are just in it and they don't need to get out of it because they get everything they need inside of it. So that's that's yeah, a big yeah. idea. And yeah, when you're in it, you earn. I mean, why would you leave, right? Yeah, and for yeah, and for these developers um, and publishers, there's kind of like a double whammy working with us. The first one is. Um, we're cheaper than Steam. Steam charges 30%, we charge 15%. So that means that, okay, let's assume you make a marketing campaign. Where do you send your users? The, where you earn more money or where you earn less money, right? So there, there's there's like a natural tendency to start yeah. spending dollars to send the traffic to Ultra. So this means that Ultra will grow through the content of game developers, number one. Number two, when they direct the users on Ultra, they can have a referral link, which will make them earn a percentage of everything that these players are going to spend on games and DLCs. So that means that um, there will be some kind of like a passive income for, for, for them for years um, just because they brought the user. And, and because mm -hmm. the platform is brand new, it's kind of like a gold uh, you know, rush uh, that's yeah. going to happen because it's really the first ones are so much easy to com convert because, you know, mm -hmm. the platform is not live. Therefore, every user you bring is, is pretty much guaranteed like a, a referral for you. So mm -hmm. so it's kind of a very interesting double whammy uh, deal mm -hmm. that they get here. And then this would never be possible with Steam. It just would be too difficult for them to do it with like a card payment or whatever. Like how do you even get the money? Like And like, I think this multi-level marketing stuff has worked so well for other projects like in yeah. terms of referral and affiliate programs and like you're making you're kind of turning everybody into like almost like someone who's uh, a part of it like a partner and you could even give higher percentages to big influencers you know all the influencer marketing you can do and stuff it can get crazy man like and if every game can do this everyone's incentivized to shill the, all the games so i feel like that this is a real big part of it and you, you couldn't you couldn't even do that with steam because like how do you get the rewards is it all paid out in URS then if you do some sort of yes uh, yeah hundred percent and, and which is done um based on the the sale of the of the game so if um so the the, the developers uh, that we work with have the choice and uh, they have they have kind of like a little slider and they can decide okay I want to be paid this much in oh, really? US or in fiat okay and um so because some developers they, they just don't want cryptocurrency and some other ones clearly told us i want 100 percent in cryptocurrency so the the truth is um most people are actually um going to purchase stuff with their credit card and so what happens is eventually it let's assume the game developer says i want 100 percent in fiat so the credit card happens so there's no conversion necessary but the referral and the promoter fee are paid in US. So these are automatically then even forced to be converted because then we can pay everybody with, with that. So um, so it's a it's a very um, it's a very convenient um, mechanism, and then everybody gets you know their rewards instantly. Um, also for the resale of uh, of secondhand um, um, you know NFTs and. And another thing that's very cool um, is that we we also have promoter fees on secondhand sale. So you oh, you yeah. are like and, and and the promoter fee is then um, set by the seller. So if let's assume you have a really rare thing that's like very valuable, it's worth a lot of money, but it's not easy to sell. So what you can do is you can say, well, okay, um, I'm willing to give. 15% to anybody that sells my NFT. And then you, in your stream, you can say, hey guys, there's this NFT. And if somebody buys it, boom, you get the 15%. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and it's very interesting because you can do it for any NFT. Um, mm -hmm. So that I think 
you know, you will see um, people are going to make apps where you will list NFTs by and then see the promoter fees and the potential rewards. And so on. Power, yeah. Yes. That's and then cool. some people are just going to pick the NFTs that are really interesting and start promoting them on their social networks and so on. So it's going to be quite, uh, quite, uh, and every time, you know, they promote it, of course, you know, this advertisement for bringing more users on Ultra because really the NFTs on Ultra, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. What, what's the relationship between, okay, so, so you have a game which uh, is similar to like, yeah, like uh, Fortnite and all the items are NFTs. Like what's the relationship between you guys ultra and then the game using ultra NFTs? Do they work alongside you to like build the items to be backed by ultra or how, how what's the relationship there between a game and you guys to get the actual tokens as a URS token? Oh, in terms of the game developers, the way it works that they can simply use the SDK. So the same way they would use an SDK, they just use ours. And since our SDK has, you know, a lot of the functionalities for the game developers, like achievement in the board, yada, yada, uh, they also have NFTs at the same time. So they don't need to install one more one more SDK, which is, you know, it should be in a game dev, you don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's very simple for them. They also have Cloud Script, which allows them to do some interaction, uh, which are scalable. They don't need to understand servers or DevOps, uh, and it's fully scalable. So they can they can have like when a, when you kill a monster in a game, there's a percentage chance you're gonna drop an NFT or a normal item. And we saw them to go into all the details of okay, what if my game just becomes super successful overnight? One crash at least for the, for that purpose. You mm. know? <laughs> the rest yeah. crash is that on us. Um, but so yeah, that, that's the way it works with the, the game developers. And for the gamers, they don't need to worry about it because when they create their account for the first time on the platform, by default, they have a wallet uh, installed. They don't need to understand private keys or anything either. Uh, they don't need to understand passphrase. Uh, everything is made to be seamless for the users while keeping the non-custodial aspect uh, of the wallet. So we don't own the key of the users. It's their own wallet. We cannot temper with it. But still, if they right. lose it, they can recover the keys. Uh, so that allows them basically to directly have access to NFTs that they can get to crypto and no need to worry about blockchain, just the same way they would do in, in a normal game, right? And, um, with, um, an another yeah, thing about the NFT, so the SDK is actually one um tool that we provide developers but it's not required like they can make nfts like the old-fashioned way like um you know like uh, engine or other uh, solution but so so what we do is we just provide one convenient way of doing it but if you want you can really develop your own solution around our nfts and have you know your own you know access on the uh, blockchain data and so on yeah yeah okay so with um if you use ultra the sdk uh also the tokens within the game will be uh are basically urs tokens but can you convert those into erc20s with the bridge so you can yes you can yeah so um as part of the infrastructure we provide is is we really, we're providing um the ability for you to do bi-directional swaps um, so, so far we support, um, Ethereum, but we're going to support, um, um, you know, ESC, uh, and, you know, EOS and other, other chains. So, so they can um, just build it whatever they want. And then if you say you yeah. get an item, an NFT, a valuable NFT in a game, which they use ultra, you can then swap it to ERC 20 or a host of other blockchains and eventually yes. mm -hmm. that's pretty and cool. Then, yeah. yeah. And then in terms of, um, um, the yeah then the, the game can have their own fts as well right so a fungible tokens mm -hmm. right so yeah. um we typically you're going to see two fts um for games um which is kind of like already kind of like the the case when you look at games they always have like what we call a hard currency and then a soft currency mm -hmm. you know, the hard currency is typically something that you um you know pay for and then the soft currency is typically something you earn or you you play mm. and you and well here it's kind of going to be also a dual a mechanism where there's one which is used for purchasing and reselling nfts and then the other mm. one which can be used for the game's own like logic uh, um yeah mm. it's just all linking back to the token like and, and even at the beginning like a second ago you said with the whole uh 
actual people who want to do transactions need to stake the URS token as well. Like, it's just going to get so much staking of this. I, I think you, there's even a mechanism where you can stake it to get, like, rewards, right? What's the it's some sort of rewards? And you can get, like, merchandise and all these other things. Yeah. Like, um, I can't, that maybe, maybe... You have a lot of, you know, things highly desirable. Like, I don't know if you have a game very popular, you have like a skin which only exists in 10, 10 units. And it could be the only way to get it would be through this way. And oh, okay, yeah. if I stake US, you can have all the fun of that game all of a sudden. Like, I want it. How do I do? You stake some tokens, not much, but if it's a lot of people, that's the, that's that's a lot of uh, tokens stake as well. So there's many ways we can use the way uh, we design the token, token NFT standard to actually do this kind of mechanics. Uh, and since we have a lot of content through all the publishers, there's a lot of things we can do. Uh, it can be something as simple as receiving a voucher uh, for a new game upcoming or getting a, a better access to a game, you know, like nobody can get it only ways this way or that way and then one of yeah. them is that so we have plenty of way to do that and getting people excited about it and by staking you also contribute you know to the ecosystem being like okay i'm, I'm part of it i believe it uh and that's also help you know to increase your transaction speed so mm. when, will you be able to stake? When, when will that happen like because uh you know we've got wave two happening next week which is another way how many so how many people are coming in and can you actually stake at the moment Not no yet. right no, right now the staking is not activated yet. It's going to well, be activated I, next year. Well, actually, you can for Ultra Power, yes, but if you don't earn anything from it, like aside from the Ultra Power, which replenishes automatically every twenty-four hours. Uh, but there's no reward for this, and that's that's the next step we're going to work on. And there's a lot of very interesting use cases, and you know, I'm thinking, you know, things like, um, you know, typically when you go on on services like netflix and so on you you pay a subscription fee right mm. there there are ways you know where you can finance that by staking so basically we you would say hey guys you know if you stake uh, i don't know 50 or 100 bucks us then you get the pro plan and then suddenly lots of new things unlock and because we're yeah, an ecosystem cool. it's very convenient for us to say a hey, game uh, like application developer you know, would like you to add a functionality for our pro plan users. And if every app starts doing it, then there's a real value, kind of like uh, Amazon Prime, you know, you, you get this subscription plan and then, oh, you get the movies there and then, oh, there's these games and you the free of delivery and this and that. I think we're going definitely to have a plan like that. And it's mm. quite interesting because if you have, you know, 10 million users that do that, it's you know it's you're you're getting you know to some substantial um uh, total value locked right yeah, um so sure. it's um uh, and then and then this thing allows us you know to further um you know provide new services and so on is there is there an inflation rate for the token or is it completely fixed at a billion yeah there's an inflation and we're I believe we're the blockchain with the least inflation that, you know, blockchain that has inflation that has the least. And the way okay. it works is we're basically, um, there's an Oracle that, you know, checks the value of US USD. And mm -hmm. then for block producers, um, and we have seven, basically we talked to all of them and we said, okay, what is the cost that you have to run your operations? And then it said, oh, server this, server that, blah, blah, blah. And, then, um, and then we took the one that has the highest cost, the highest common denominator. And then on top of that, we added a premium, which is kind of like what they're supposed to, you know, they're not working for free, right? Yeah. And, and, and so, and then we had like an amount in dollars. And so we basically hard coded that in the protocol. So from there, if they do all the blocks, because sometimes they might miss a block because the server goes down or something. If they do all the blocks, they would get the entirety of this amount that we um, decided. If something you know happens, they lose um, some certain blocks. They basically lose a part of that amount. So it's their job to really run the network like as well as possible. And so if you look at the inflation now that the network's actually running, like it's 
it's absolutely um, it's right, like, now, right neg negligible. Right now, it's zero point zero forty two percent. Oh wow, yeah, it's basically nothing. Like big, big okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But what's Ethereum as well? Bitcoin's one point seven. I think Ethereum is actually more than that, but I think it's going down now because of the burning thing. I don't really like that actually, yeah, but that's another whole video. But yeah, that's very, very low. And that's seven yeah. block producers. And are you expanding? Thinking you've got Ubisoft, right? I think yeah. you've got a few other ones. Maybe I think EOS Stack or something. I can't remember exactly which ones they were, but um, yeah. it doesn't really matter. But like, are you planning on expanding the amount of people who are going to be validating and people who come on in the future, right? Yeah, yeah there I mean... is. No, sorry. Yeah, there, there is a, a finite limit where it makes <clears> sense. <throat> Uh, we don't need to have, you know, I don't know, 100 producers. It doesn't make much sense in terms of, you know, performance. Uh, so the idea is just to pick the one that makes sense, that are highly technical or that, that have a ha very high reputation, uh, like mm. Ubisoft, where they're like, sure, I mean, would they screw up with my visual items? I don't think so. Yeah. And also, you can uh, always move it back to ERC20 if you wanted to, if that was a problem for you, because you can always throw these tokens in. You can turn your US uh, into... And ELC twenty, the the items. I think that swap mechanism is really cool, and you can yeah. like turn it into anything in the future. And then yeah. you don't have to have everything on the actual blockchain of URS at any I given mean, point. I mean, it's, some it's, of Bitcoin, right? it has this uh, obviously uh, uh, like great advantages: free transaction, instant settlements, and all of that. So you, you still want it. if you do if you have an app or a service, you will definitely want to be on Ultra because of that. Mm. It's just, yeah, yeah. just better. Um, but at the same time, yeah, we, we have the bridge and you can just, you know, swap when you need. It. It's super cool, man. Uh, just, it just gives you a choice, whatever you want, right? If you want to have yeah. it on chain, so you can move it around. If you want to have, if you, if you know, you're never going to sell this freaking NFT, move it to like some hot hard, hardware wallet or something on, on a ERC yeah. 20, I don't know, like it's up to you. But like... and, what, <laughs> and what we're, we're probably going to do also is that we're going to accept eventually any cryptocurrency as payment. So just give us your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, your engine, your whatever. We you can buy games, you can buy because <clears> we, we take care of the conversion instantly and then it ends up still in US. So basically yeah, yeah, we yeah. sell these engines and or coins and then we buy ultra coins and then we finish the transaction and there you mm. go. And it's it's not a governance token though, though, because like I'm looking at it now, like this uh <laughs> Is, it, is there any governance linked to the token in any way? No, so it's it, eventually there will be one, eventually. Um, okay. But the, the, the thing is, if you look today um, at governance tokens for blockchains like EOS and so on, it's a, it's a massive mess. Um, and also I it's agree. riddled with corruption mm -hmm. and, you know, backdoor tricks and stuff. So mm -hmm. it, we, we didn't want to, to do, you know, to work with this. And so that's why um, there's none. Uh, but eventually, um, once we, I, you know, once we see something that's successful and that's actually working well, and and actually EOS is working on something very interesting um, called Eden, um, yeah, yeah. and we, uh, you know, with the governance like this, maybe you know we're going to have a um, look at it. Yeah, you know, have a look at this. Yeah. Well, you but could, first you could we even... want to see it successful, and then and then we will move towards that. You could even have some sort of staking mechanism for the token, which then the longer you stake, the more uh, subsequent governance URS tokens you get for staking it. For a long, like the longer you stake for, the more you get of a new token, which then gives you governance. But like that's the whole like we could talk about governance for ages. We did the whole governance talk two years ago with EOS, and yeah. it's cool. It's cool though how um, Ultra is EOS IO technology, and it's probably you know this is probably the biggest success of any EOS IO chain by far i'd say what you guys are doing like there's not that many other ones really doing much and eos isn't even that good either but generally speaking it's just um done so well bro like like, like the token is now catching up to the real reality of the situation and like i feel generally speaking crypto gaming is literally going to take over <laughs> we've been saying this for ages like uh, a student's game items are you know are backed by something and you can have even metaverse now you can have games where you can literally play them to earn money you don't even need to have a, an actual job in life your job can be literally working in games making money i told Absolutely. you i think i said a year ago i was like if i had play to earn games and i was a kid i would I'd already be a fucking millionaire like <laughs> I would have so like yeah. it's uh the kids of the next the next generation are gonna be so 
so ha lucky i think yeah so. yeah there's, they're, they're they're being spoiled really um yeah. and but it's going to be quite interesting because exactly of what you're saying um let's assume i start a game um i'm earning some nfts and you know i'm setting i'm getting some us but the thing is we, we're really at the beginning of the of the platform and adoption will grow and the value of this coin will go up. So some of these gamers potentially are going to be millionaires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> something it. they didn't like they yeah. might not even know that game's gonna be big. They might find it on Ultra, it's a small game, it turns out to be yeah. big, and then the demand catches up later. Yeah. Shit. And then they could be millionaires at like the age of nothing for just playing a game. <laughs> and, like, and like gaming is like one of the biggest industries anyway. And like the only way you get revenue is by sponsorship at the moment. So all yeah. that sponsorship money is just going to evolve into a new revenue stream for gamers. Yeah. And it's just like, it's mind blowing because gaming is literally massive. It's like one of the biggest industries in the world. So yeah. I don't know what the future holds, but there's going to be a lot of rich kids running about. <laughs> like, yeah, like running really, in the metaverse you know yeah <laughs> there you go. they're plugged in yeah. they have sort of tube plugged into their head like the it's literally it's not metaverse it's matrix and they're earning <laughs> money in it it's insane man yeah what, what would insane. you say then um just to like kind of wrap this up as a sweet sweet video but what would you say is the, the next steps then for ultra and like what's coming up on the roadmap for the future for into next year 2022 i think what you're going to see very soon is uh more access you know first access to the platform that's going to be obviously key right now there's access to the platform you can go on ultra.io and download the the client but you will have access to the wallet and then people can buy tokens from there uh, but you also have like data tv which is one of the partner we have uh, yeah, so next year you're gonna see more and more partners as well uh jo joining the joining the band plus some applications also that uh are quite developed including, you know, the NFT marketplace is coming up, as you guys, I think, all know today. Uh, we have other applications as well in the process. You can also see the exclusive games, uh, some really cool stuff uh, we've been working on. on. Honestly, it's just really cool. And the design is really exciting as well. Um, yeah, and some exciting news with large partners as well, I believe, like substantially larger than what we have today. Yeah, yeah. And I think, like, I just can't see any reason why this isn't going to just slowly take more of Steam's market share. And you were going to say something, David, as well. Yeah, um, I think, you know, um, what we're seeing is right now, some of these games are being very successful. And a lot of the traditional game developers are really getting interested in NFTs and such. So um, it's quite cool because we're in this position where, yeah, we signed 150 game developers. And now they're coming and they're like, you know, can you explain us a little bit more? Because we get this game and we're thinking of this and that. And so we're, you know, it's kind of, it's a great, it's a great time to be, uh, to be ultra right now. And, and in addition to that, also, we're working on different methods for them to kind of like increase um, visibility of their games. So for example, we can create um, collections of NFTs that are going to be emitted prior to the release of a game. Um, we can also, you know, do, I, there's a lot of the interesting things we can do with them. And so everybody's kind of, all of these developers are kind of doing different things with us. And so there's going to be a lot of surprises and a lot of events that are going to happen just like one after another, after another. And so it's going to be, I think, you know, quite exciting in the coming months. Do you have any kind of ideas of projections of like the amount of users you might have by the end of next year in terms of using the platform? Or is it completely just like, who knows, this could be uh, 10 million or 100,000? What do you think? Next year, we're definitely going to be in the mil millions. Um, it's hard to say when, but with everything we're doing in all the partnerships um, and, you know, events that are, have, you know, are signed and already scheduled, um, we can definitely expect the growth. Now, the thing is like, um, you know, you... Basically, eventually you reach a critical mass and then you get the hockey stick, you know, growth. Um, and so we just might take a little bit of time and then, you know, eventually work, it picks up. Yeah, and, yeah. and then you you have like the, the, you know, word being shared and everybody doing their referral links and so on. But we're, we're seeing um, already today, um, you know, a, a increase in accounts being created. I think we're doing something like five, six hundred a day. 
Um, not everybody's like um, um, doing it on PC necessarily, uh, which means, you know, the thing is today, um, um, blockchain accounts are only created when you are on PC. Um, and so people are just registering, keeping their name and also registering because they are doing a ref, they are, they are being a referee um, or they want to make an account so that they can do referrals. Um, and so, and so, yeah, we're, our numbers show something five, 600 per day, um, which right, is, yeah. you know, for a platform that isn't live pretty good. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> and there will yeah, be yeah. a link in the description legends. There will be a link below to, to sign up to this and get like a pre account before it launches. And that's like the best way because you can get your refer referral link, start referring your friends and they can buy games. And then you get, I think you can get up to like 2% from every sale from someone buying a game. Yeah. Yeah. Up yeah, to 3%. Yeah, that, yeah. And that then, depends on the, the game deciding what they want no, to do. Right? Like, so there's two things. There's a referral mechanism, which is uh, with, um, multi, it's a multi-level referral. So basically, I invite a friend, and if he spends you know, something, I get 2%. And then if he invites a friend, um, I get 1% from his referrals. So it's oh, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, and you can multiply it by you know, as many people uh, as, you, as you want. So that's that. And then there's the promoter fee, which is um, a percentage decided by the seller of an asset. Like, for example, Ubisoft publishes a game and then says anybody that promotes Far Cry receive 15% from the sale. And oh, that's, wow. and they can decide really, they could be setting 60, 70%. Really, it's up to them. So big, man. Yeah. And then you. you that alone you, is a massive, yeah. massive deal. Yeah. Yeah, I can see this games just getting blown up like crazy all over twitter all over facebook all over yeah. YouTube videos and like you that's know that's the goal that's the goal yeah yeah i think a lot some people will make a lot of money by just doing that just, yeah, yeah you know and which is the goal the whole objective is really using this as a way to grow our community um so that you know people are incentivized to actually um speak about something um anywhere and then and then this puts eyes on ultra and then automatically we we uh, earn a user um, i think it is i think is people are going to make have whole companies built around just the premise of trying to it's an affiliate marketing company basically that's what it turns out to, yes. it to be and then you'll have it just everywhere it would just be like anywhere anywhere it's really exciting man like i'm really excited for next year as well obviously guys we will do this again i love getting you guys on because you're literally the cutting edge like the front the forefront of terms of like the gaming crypto gaming industry because you know all the people like you know amd ubisoft you're uh talking to atari and stuff like that so like um it's gonna be a sweet next year man and have, yeah. a, have a good have a good year yourselves you've probably been working your absolute asses off so probably take a chill pill go back <laughs> to christmas see your families and then um have a good new year and then next year i think it's just going to be just exciting times man. yeah it's, it's it's gonna be crazy for sure it's gonna be cool man it's gonna be cool is there anything else you want to get um when it say to the community or uh, is that it? no honestly when it's a jump off it's like in the ministry of the live stream starting as well so it's, it's, you have to be busy going get all right legends. well guys hit the link below to sign up this is nicholas and dave on the screen you can see them they're absolute legends you're going to see them a lot more in the world probably what they're building or you know your games company is going to get bigger so well you'll probably see these guys more and more in the future and uh yeah guys have a good day and i'll see you guys on the flip side cheers nick cheers dave your legends and uh thank you thank, thank you, you. See you later, guys cheers bye good bye, one, bye. bye.